This is the Super Zoom, and you're watching the first very detailed DaVinci Resolve tutorial on how to do this. I will exactly show you which problems I faced and how I solved them. First, the camera settings. It's very important that you put your camera onto a tripod and set the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed and the white balance to manual. The next step, how to film this. Search an object you want to aim on. In my example, it's here, this lock on this church door. And then I went back like 30 or 32 meters to have the whole church visible. I set the vocal length to around 28, so I think everything between 24 and 50 should work very well. Then I moved like 8 meters closer, took another shot, again 8 meters closer, take the next shot, until I'm in front of this lock and I have a nice close-up shot. Make sure when you film this that your object is always in the center of your camera. That's everything we need, let's jump right into Da Vinci. So I've got here this clip you saw where I just filmed here the church in the different distances and now I will cut every frame out. For example like here I'm standing still so I cut here the frame out and we will freeze that frame later. So I'll just let the camera roll and set here a cut. Then I go closer right here, cut this one out and I will repeat that process until I have a frame from every shot. So these are the six shots I have, the wide shot, and then I went closer, eight meters every time. Then I will select the first one, go here to change clip speed and freeze the frame. And I will do that with every single clip. So we just need the freeze frame, not the whole clip. Then I will stack them above each other. So I have the wide shot on the bottom and the close up all the way on the top. So I have a cake like that, select all of them and I make them for around 8 seconds. Doesn't matter too much, we can shorten them later. With that we take all of them and create a new fusion clip with them and jump right into fusion. Here in the fusion page you can delete all the merge nodes and the background node. Now click here on this left little dot so you can exactly see which shot this is. So this is the wide shot here, so we take this one all the way down here. Then this one is the next one, we place it here, one closer. So these are all the shots we need. This is the wide shot and then with every one we get a bit closer. Then take the wide shot and connect it to the media out and take the next shot and connect it here to the media in one. So it creates a merge node and you see it's plugged in with the green input. So this one is on the foreground. And this is very important that every shot that you get closer is on top of the other. Then select here the merge node, go to settings and turn the blend down to around 0.5 so you can see through this shot. Then with the second shot selected, hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. And now we will transform this one so it matches with the other shot. You can zoom in here by holding control or command. And then we adjust this shot until it fits perfectly. The church itself doesn't matter too much. You need to aim here to the center point where the close up at the end is. So here the lock, this is very important. The church around here doesn't matter too much. I'll explain that a bit later. When the controls here are too hard, hold down command or control and you can adjust it even more precise that it fits perfect. When the shot is perfectly aligned, go down here to the merge node and turn the blend all the way back to one. And now you see the image doesn't fit perfectly. So go up here, take this rectangle mask, plug it into the media too and then go here and give it a soft edge. So we have a feather around here and you can play around here with the height and the width that you have only the frame here from this door. And with this rectangle mask, we solved that problem. And now we repeat that process with each media in we have. So we plug it in here, go to the merge settings, turn the blend down, select the media three, hit shift and spacebar, Type in transform, make it smaller, zoom a little bit in so it's better visible. 
and adjust it until it fits perfectly like that. Turn the blend all the way up to one. Then take the rectangle mask, plug it in, adjust it so only the door is in the frame and give it a soft edge. If you have any issues with the feathering, just play around with the rectangle and the transform and then you get a good result so it matches perfectly in, into your wider shot. And just repeat that process over and over again. And there is one problem I've had and I didn't know how to solve it. And this is when I take here the close-up shot and I make it very small. You can see the, the quality is getting very bad of this shot. But later when we take the transform node, it's no longer a problem. I can't explain you exactly why, but don't get confused if here the quality is very bad, we'll fix that later. Or it will fix itself later. When you've plugged everything inside here, you should have a picture just like that. And you don't notice that there are multiple shots inside it. So these are the preparations before we can zoom in. So for the zoom effect, make here a bit more space, select the last merge node, hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. We create the zoom effect only with this transform node. So make sure here the pivot point is exactly here on the object you want to zoom in. So in my example, it's here, this lock. So I go here to the pivot point and adjust it until it's perfectly centered to this lock. So when we zoom in, it goes directly to this lock and this is what we want to have. Then on the very first frame, set a keyframe on size. Now it's up to you how long you want to have the super zoom to have. In my example, I wanted to have two seconds, so it's 50 frames. Then I type here in like amount 50. It could be even more, so I go until 80. So this is how much I want to zoom in. And you can see the quality now is perfectly fine. So it's just before without transform node. Don't ask me why, I really don't know it. But here this problem is solved. So what we have from frame zero to frame 50, we have here this zoom in effect. And it's not so engaging until now, but we can adjust it with the curve. Go up here to splines, enable here the transform node, click here on zoom to fit, and you have here this zoom curve. Hit Ctrl A or Command A and press S to smoothen them. And now adjust the curve to your liking. I want to have it a bit slower at the beginning, then it goes very fast and slow again at the end. When you're happy with your curve, you can close your splines. And one last thing, go here with the transform nodes to settings and enable motion blur, because you know we all love motion blur. The quality, you can put it to around six and the shutter angle 230. It depends on your liking, how strong you want it to have. In my opinion, it looks very good like this. Back to the edit page, we'll let it pre-render and then we can watch it. And this is how you can create the super zoom effect in DaVinci Resolve. Have fun creating and see you in the next one.